Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare Act Four Scene One A House in Rome Antony, Octavius, and Lepidus seated at a table. These many, then, shall die. Their names are pricked. Your brother, too, must die. Consent you, Lepidus? I do consent. Prick him down, Antony. Upon condition, Publius shall not live. Who is your sister's son, Mark Anthony? He shall not live. Look, with a spot I damn him. But, Lepidus, go you to Caesar's house, fetch the will hither, and we shall determine how to cut off some charge in legacies. What, shall I find you here? Or here, or at the capital. Exit Lepidus. This is a slight unmeritable man, meet to be sent on errands. Is it fit that the threefold world divided, he should stand one of the three to share it? So you thought him, and took his voice, who should be pricked to die in our black sentence and prescription. Octavius, I have seen more days than you, and though we lay these honors on this man, to ease ourselves of divers slanderous loads, he shall but bear them as the ass bears gold, to groan and sweat under the business, either led or driven, as we point the way. And having brought our treasure where we will, then take we down his load and turn him off, like to the empty ass, to shake his ears and graze in commons. You may do your will but he's a tried and valiant soldier. So is my horse, Octavius, and for that I do appoint him store of provender. It is a creature that I teach to fight, to wind, to stop, to run directly on, his corporal motion governed by my spirit. And in some taste is Lepidus but so. He must be taught and trained and bid go forth, a barren-spirited fellow, one that feeds on abjects, orts, and imitations which, out of use and staled by other men, begin his fashion. Do not talk of him, but as a property. And now, Octavius, listen great things. Brutus and Cassius are levying powers. We must straight make head. Therefore let our alliance be combined, our best friends made, our means stretched, and let us presently go sit in council. How covert matters may be best disclosed, and open perils surest answered. Let us do so, for we are at the stake, and bade about with many enemies, and some that smile have in their hearts, I fear, millions of mischiefs. Exeunt Scene 2 Camp near Sardis, before Brutus's tent. Drum. Enter Brutus, Lucilius, Lucius, and soldiers. Tintinius and Pindarus meeting them. Stand! Ho! Give the word, ho, and stand. What now, Lucilius? Is Cassius near? He is at hand, and Pindarus is come, to do you salutation from his master. He greets me well. Your master, Pindarus, in his own charge, or by ill officers, hath given me some worthy cause to wish things done, undone. But if he be at hand, I shall be satisfied. I do not doubt but that my noble master will appear, such as he is, full of regard and honour. He is not doubted. A word, Lucilius. How he received you, let me be resolved. With courtesy and with respect enough, but not with such familiar instances, nor with such free and friendly conference as he hath used of old. Thou hast described a hot friend cooling ever note lucilius when love begins to sicken and decay it useth an enforced ceremony there are no tricks in plain and simple faith but hollow men like horses hot at hand make gallant show and promise of their mettle but when they should endure the bloody spur they fall their crests and like deceitful jades sink in the trial comes his army on they mean this night in sardis to be quartered the greater part the horse in general are come with cassius hark he is arrived lo march within march gently on to meet him enter cassius and his powers stand ho stand ho 
Speak the word along. Stand. 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 Most noble brother, you have done me wrong. Judge me, you gods. Wrong I mine enemies. And if not so, how should I wrong a brother? Brutus, this sober form of yours hides wrongs. And when you do them... Cassius, be content. Speak your griefs softly. I do know you well. Before the eyes of both our armies here, which should perceive nothing but love from us, let us not wrangle. Bid them move away. Then, in my tent, Cassius, enlarge your griefs, and I will give you audience. Pindarus, bid our commanders lead their charges off a little from this ground. Lucilius, do the like, and let no man come to our tent till we have done our conference. Let Lucius and Tentenius guard the door. Exeunt. Scene three. Brutus's tent. Enter Brutus and Cassius. That you have wronged me doth appear in this, that you have condemned and noted Lucius Pella for taking bribes here of the Sardians. We're in my letters praying on his side because I knew the man was slighted off. You wronged yourself to write in such a case. In such a time as this it is not meet that every nice offence should bear his comment. Let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm, to sell and mart your offices for gold to undeservers. I an itching palm? You know that you were Brutus that speak this, or by the gods this speech were else your last. The name of Cassius honours this corruption, and chastisement doth therefore hide his head. Chastisement? Remember March, the Ides of March, remember. Did not great Julius bleed for justice's sake? What villain touched his body that did stab and not for justice? What shall one of us that struck the foremost man of all this world but for supporting robbers shall we now contaminate our fingers with base bribes and sell the mighty space of our large honours for so much trash as may be grasped thus i had rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a roman brutus bay me not i'll not endure it you forget yourself to hedge me in. I am a soldier, I, older in practice, abler than yourself to make conditions. Go to. You are not, Cassius. I am. I say, you are not. Urge me no more, I shall forget myself. Have mind upon your health, tempt me no further. Away, slight man. Is't possible? Hear me, for I will speak. Must I give way and room to your rash collar? Shall I be frighted when a madman stares? Now, ye gods, ye gods, must I endure all this? All this? I, more, fret till your proud heart break. Go show your slaves how choleric you are, and make your bondmen tremble. Must I budge? Must I observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humour? By the gods you shall digest the venom of your spleen, Though it do split you, For from this day forth I use you for my mirth, Yea, for my laughter, when you are waspish. Is it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true, and it shall please me well. For mine own part, I shall be glad to learn of noble men. You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. Peace, peace. You durst not so have tempted him. I durst not. No. What durst not tempt him? For your life you durst not. 
Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassius, in your threats, for I am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me as the idle wind, which I respect not. I did send to you for certain sums of gold, which you denied me, for I can raise no money by vile means. By heaven, I had rather coin my heart and drop my blood for drachmas than to wring from the hard hands of peasants their vile trash by any indirection. I did send to you for gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius so? When Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to lock such rascal counters from his friends, be ready, gods, with all your thunderbolts. Dash him to pieces. I denied you not. You did. I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus hath reaved my heart. A friend should bear his friend's infirmities, but Brutus makes mine greater than they are. I do not, till you practice them on me. You love me not. I do not like your faults. A friend, I could never see such faults. A flatterer's would not, though they do appear as huge as high Olympus. Come, Antony and young Octavius, come. Revenge yourselves alone on Cassius, for Cassius is a weary of the world, hated by one he loves, braved by his brother, checked like a bondman, all his faults observed, set in a notebook, learned and conned by rote to cast into my teeth. No, oh, I could weep my spirit from mine eyes. There is my dagger, and here my naked breast, within a heart dearer than Plutus mine, richer than gold. If that thou beest a Roman, take it forth. I that denied thee gold will give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar, for I know when thou didst hate him worse, thou lovest him better than ever thou lovest Cassius. Sheathe your dagger. Be angry when you will. It shall have scope. Do what you will. Dishonour shall be humour. Oh, Cassius, you are yoked with a lamb that carries anger as the flint bears fire, who much enforced shows a hasty spark, and straight is cold again. Hath Cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to his Brutus, when grief and blood ill-tempered vexeth him? When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered too. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. And my heart, too. Oh, Brutus. What's the matter? Have not you love enough to bear with me, when that wrath's humour which my mother gave me makes me forgetful? Yes, Cassius. And from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, he'll think your mother chides, and leave you so. Within. Let me go in to see the generals. There is some grudge between them. Tis not meet. They be alone. Within. You shall not come to them. Within. Nothing but death shall stay me. Enter poet, followed by Lucilius, Titinius, and Lucius. How now? What's the matter? For shame, you generals. What do you mean? Love and be friends as two such men should be. For I have seen more years, I'm sure, than ye. <laughs> How vilely doth this cynic rhyme. Get you hence, sirrah. Saucy fellow, hence. Bear with him, Brutus, tis his fashion. I'll know his humour when he knows his time. What should the wars do with these jigging fools? Companion, hence. Away, away, be gone. Exit poet. Lucilius and Tentenius bid the commanders prepare to lodge their companies to-night. And come yourselves, and bring Masala with you immediately to us. Exeunt Lucilius and Tentinius. Lucius, a bowl of wine. Exit Lucius. I did not think you could have been so angry. Oh, Cassius, I am sick of many.
griefs. Of your philosophy you make no use if you give place to accidental evils. No man bears sorrow better. Portia is dead. Ha! Portia! She is dead. How scaped I killing when I crossed you so? O oh, insupportable and touching loss! Upon what sickness? Impatient of my absence, and grief that young Octavius with Mark Antony have made themselves so strong, for with her death that tidings came. With this she fell distract, and her attendants absent swallowed fire. And died so? Even so. O oh, ye immortal gods! Re-enter Lucius with wine and taper. Speak no more of her. Give me a bowl of wine. In this I bury all unkindness, Cassius. My heart is thirsty for that noble pledge. Fill, Lucius, till the wine or swell the cup. I cannot drink too much of Brutus' love. Come in, Titanius. Exit Lucius. Re-enter Tintinius with Messala. Welcome, good Messala. Now sit we close about this taper here, and call in question our necessities. Portia, art thou gone? No more, I pray you. Messala, I have here received letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty power, bending their expedition toward Philippi. Myself have letters of the self-same tenor. With what addition? That by prescription and bills of outlawry, Octavius, Antony, and Lepidus have put to death an hundred senators. Therein our letters do not well agree. Mine speak of seventy senators that died by their prescriptions, Cicero being one. Cicero one. Cicero is dead, and by that order of prescription. Had you your letters from your wife, my lord? No, Masala. Nor nothing in your letters rid of her? Nothing, Masala. That methinks is strange. Why ask you? Hear you aught of her in yours? No, my lord. Now, as you are a Roman, tell me true. Then like a Roman bear the truth I tell, for certain she is dead, and by strange manner. Why? Farewell, Portia. We must die, Masala, with meditating that she must die once. I have the patience to endure it now. Even so, great men great losses should endure. I have as much of this in art as you, yet my nature could not bear it so. Well, to our work alive. What do you think of marching to Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Your reason? This it is. Tis better that the enemy seek us. So shall he waste his means, weary his soldiers doing himself offence. Whilst we, lying still, are full of rest, defence, and nimbleness. Good reasons must, of force, give place to better. The people twixt Philippi and this ground do stand but in a forced affection, for they have grudged us contribution. The enemy, marching along by them, by them shall make a fuller number up. Come on, refreshed, new added, and encouraged. From which advantage shall we cut him off, if at Philippi we do face him there, these people at our back? Hear me, good brother. Under your pardon, you must note, beside, that we have tried the utmost of our friends. Our legions are brimful, our cause is ripe, the enemy increaseth every day. We, at the height, are ready to decline. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves, or lose our ventures. Then with your will go on. 
we'll along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. The deep of night is crept upon our talk, and nature must obey necessity, which we will niggard with a little rest. There is no more to say. No more. Good night. Early tomorrow we will rise in tents. Lucius! Enter Lucius. My gown! Exit Lucius. Farewell, good Messala. Good night, Tentenius. Noble, noble Cassius. Good night and good repose. Oh, my dear brother, this was an ill beginning to the night. Never come such division between our souls. Let it not, Brutus. Everything is well. Good night, my lord. Good night, good brother. Good, good night, night, Lord, lord Brutus. Brutus. Farewell, everyone. Exeunt all but Brutus. Re-enter Lucius with the gown. Give me the gown. Where is thy instrument? Here in the tent. What? Thou speak'st drowsily? Poor knave, I blame thee not. Thou art o'erwatched. Call Claudius and some other of my men. I'll have them sleep on cushions in my tent. Varro and Claudius. Enter Varro and Claudius. Calls, my lord? I pray you, sirs, lie in my tent and sleep. It may be I shall raise you by and by on business to my brother, Cassius. So please you, we will stand and watch your pleasure. I will not have it so. Lie down, good sirs. It may be I shall otherwise bethink me. Look, Lucius, here's the book I sought for so. I put it in the pocket of my gown. Varro and Claudius lie down. I was sure your lordship did not give it to me. Bear with me, good boy. I am much forgetful. Canst thou hold up thy heavy eyes a while, and touch thy instrument a strain or two? Ay, my lord, I please you. <laughs> it does, my boy. I trouble thee too much, but thou art willing. It is my duty, sir. I should not urge thy duty past thy might. I know young bloods look for a time of rest. I have slept, my lord, already. It was well done, and thou shalt sleep again. I will not hold thee long. If I do live, I will be good to thee. Music and a song. This is a sleepy tune. Oh, murderous slumber, layest thou thy leaden mace upon my boy that plays thee music? Gentle knave, good night. I will not do thee so much wrong to wake thee. If thou dost nod, thou breakst thy instrument. I'll take it from thee. And, good boy, good night. Let me see, um, let me see, is not the leaf turned down where I left reading? Huh, here it is, I think. Enter the ghost of Caesar. How ill this taper burns! Ha! Who comes here? I think it is the weakness of my eyes that shapes this monstrous apparition. Comes upon me. Art thou any Thing? Art thou some god, some angel, or some devil that makes my blood cold and my hair to stare? Speak to me what thou art. Thy evil spirit, Brutus. Why comest thou? To tell thee thou shalt see me at Philippi. Well, then... I shall see thee again. I at Philippi. Why, I will see thee at Philippi, then. Exit ghost. Now I have taken heart, thou vanishest. Ill spirit, I would hold more talk with thee. Boy, Lucius, Varro, Claudius, 
Sirs, awake, Claudius. The strings, my lord, are false. He thinks he is still at his instrument. Lucius, awake. My lord? Didst thou dream, Lucius, that thou so criest out? My lord, I do not know that I did cry. Yes, that thou didst. Didst thou see anything? Nothing, my lord. Sleep again, Lucius. Sirrah, Claudius. To Varro. Fellow thou, awake. My lord. My lord. Why did you so cry out, sirs, in your sleep? Did we, my lord? I saw you anything? No, my lord, I saw nothing. No, I, my lord. Go and commend me to my brother Cassius bid him set on his powers be times before and we will follow it shall be done my lord axiant end of act four